What's up everyone, it's Blaze from Funbox here and man, it's been a while since I was last making a video. Anyway, in today's series, uh, it is the start, I want to try out a new format where we separate out the theory from the practice. Um, I am just experimenting with this format, so I want to I want your feedback and tell me how you think it is. Uh, is it do you think it has a future in on this channel? Should I stick with it or should I just go back to explaining the theory as we write the code? Um, but I think, it, like personally, I think it's uh, way more productive for us to be doing that so that we're not stopping and like, making long videos with long explanations for something so simple. In today's video, I mean, if you clicked on this, you know that we're creating random weapons, right? So in this example, we're just going to be making four, um, a maximum of four items, and they're all swords. But the underlying code and the underlying theory that goes with this uh, is basically all the same, regardless of how many items, uh, how many objects you have in your game. Now, a couple of things to note with this is that, yes, we are dealing with uh, only very few items, but you can see that they have randomized or semi-randomized stats. They're, they're not completely random. This is from an experiment that I actually made, but we'll be making a more, a slightly more refined version of it in today's mini series. So all up, I want to make this video about uh, 15 to 20 minutes per video. Uh, we, there will be an optional section at the end if you want to add a little extra stuff to your game uh, or to this mechanic that we have here. So a couple of things that we will be using for our project. Let me get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. The first thing is we are going to cover a couple of concepts here. So our structure is we have an, I, we have an object called C generator. This generator holds a couple of things. The first thing it holds is a an item pool. Now in practice, this would be a 2D array or a DS grid um, of whatever items you want to be able to spawn in this particular situation. However, for us, we're only going to be working with one thing. It's, it's very scaled down. So this item pool itself is just going to be a single 2D array and they're all going to be swords anyway. So unfortunately, it doesn't quite work. Um, but the theory is all the same. All right, this item pool is just going to hold all this information. So object info. And it's got basically stats. The attack, speed, defense, whatever of all of the items uh, in our game. Of course, for us, again, it's only a sword, and that's fine. When we press enter, we create, create, I recently moved actually, and there's a lot of young families in my area now. I'm living, I'm still living in Tokyo, but where I am is a little bit more detached from the city. So lots of little kids and lots of noise. If you can hear that from wherever you are, yes, I live very close to uh, the next door. Um, okay, so when we press enter, we create a an object. We create an object. This object reads, so let me put a dotted line. It reads, uh, it reads these stats and it kind of duplicates it. Actually, it doesn't duplicate it. It assigns it to this object stats. So this stats gets fed into the object stats itself. Uh, feed. Or rather, these stats get assigned to the object stats. Hopefully it'll become clearer once we start writing the code, but this is, <laughs> this is a very rough, very, very rough um, diagram. All right, what we are going to be working with are 2D arrays, 2D arrays. We're just going to be working with one, but it's going to be uh, somewhat complicated. We are also going to work with enums. So if you haven't worked with enums before, um, basically it's a variable that holds a whole bunch of constants in it. Don't worry. Once you see it, 
hopefully you you might be able to uh, tap into some pre-learned knowledge. We will also have a 1D array, although we won't be emphasizing on it too much. Our main points are the 2D arrays, and the enums, as well as a bunch of other functions like uh, random and rounding and things like that. But that's really not relevant at this point in time. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, if not, then you can always leave a question and comments if you like this format or not. Obviously, with more complex videos, we're going to have more of these theory-driven the theory videos, and then we'll be doing some coding at the end of it, but uh, most of it will be theory. And then in the following videos after that, the idea is to flip that so we do more coding and less theory work. Right, so that's all. Have a look at that if that makes any sense to you. If not, then you can always ask a question in the comments section. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Even though I have been away from YouTube for a while, I still answer questions that people leave in the comments, uh, which is nice. Uh, at least I get to do that. All right, we don't need this anymore because we're done with it. Let's minimize that. Here I have my blank uh, Game Maker project. On my other screen, I have my reference project. We are going to streamline that reference project that I made earlier. All right, first things first, let's create a sprite. This sprite will need uh, four sub images. So if you don't have a sprite ready, uh, then you can just you can just do this. You can just fill it in four different objects here, right? So four, you just go, I don't know, maybe you want a green square. Maybe you want a yellow square or something. Like anything will do, just as long as you have one sprite with four sub images, that's completely fine. But for me, just to make things a lot easier to read, I'm going to import these four sprites. Vert, yep, done. Okay, so we have one sprite with four sub images. Uh, this will be very important later. And I'm gonna rename these the uh, sword. So like I said, we're not gonna be doing too much programming here. We are going to set up the skeleton so that in the next video, possibly the one after that, we can just fill in the blanks and get everything done. All right, the next thing that we need is we're going to need two scripts. The first one we are going to call stat generator. Did I spell that right? Looks right. All right, <laughs> the next one is going to be stat, actually, let's be more specific. Let's call it sword stats, All right? When you come to writing scripts in any programming situation, when you're writing a script or a function or anything, it's a good idea to give it a meaningful name. So obviously a stat generator is a stat generator. Sword stats will be sword stats. In this script, we will hold the 2D array that we were talking about before. Don't worry, this will become clear later in the next video. This one will actually generate and give some randomness to the weapon stats that we generate in our objects. And speaking of generator, let's go into the object section here. We're going to need two objects. The first one is our C generator, which we were talking about before. And let's create another one, create game object. And we're going to call this O item. I mean, strictly speaking, it should be O sword, but let's just leave that Let's just not worry about that for now. All right, we're going to write just a bit of code, just enough. Oh wait, we haven't got a room yet. Let's create a room. Let's leave it room zero. We'll change the background to a color that makes it easier to see the black sword. If you notice, we had a black sword before. And then we're just going to put in the generator into the room. It's not going to be anything else. That's all we need. We're done with the room for now, which is good. What's that doing there? Not sure. All right. Now that we have that, let's write just the bare minimum amount of code. For our generator, we'll need a create event. We will need a key pressed enter event. If I can find enter, there it is. And let's write the code for that now. All right. So for the create event, we will need to write those enums that we were talking about before. Uh, we won't fill it in right now, but we'll just write the skeleton here. All right, let me give you guys some pointers here. So here, this 
enum is going to be for the object stat itself. So the item stats that we spawn in will be these enums here, enum, and then item stat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, whoops, wrong bracket. All right, pay attention to the brackets that we're using. They're curly braces. When we put in an object here, let's. This is one that we definitely need is name. So an item stat name, right? Look at the format here. We don't have any semicolons. It's actually a comma, a regular comma at the end there. That's because an enum is a variable that is kind of like a container for a whole bunch of constant values. Uh, kind of think about uh, macros, putting a bunch of game maker macros into a single variable. That's more or less what an enum is, right? Except the difference being enums, um, you can, there are enums in C sharp for Unity, there are enums in C for Unreal. Enums are more widely used than GM, GMS uh, macros or Game Maker macros. Um, but there are different limitations to each. Regardless, we are using the most basic functionality of an enum, and that is just to have a placeholder for names, just so that they have some meaning and we know what it is. All right, the next one is going to be for our stat table. And then again, enum uh, stat table. Again, same format. For this one, we are also going to have a name. You might be wondering, why can't we just use item stat and stat table? That will become clear as we go on. So don't worry about that too much. Let's just leave it at this for now. And let's keep going with that. The next thing that we're going to need is randomize. Just so that we can tell that our code works. We want to be able to randomize, not re-randomize. We want to randomize what items come out. And by putting this in, it generates a fresh new seed every time you run the game or every time you start, every time this line gets called, um, it creates a new seed to base our spawns off of, which is very useful. And then we're going to need a global variable. So we're going to call it global dot sword for now. Actually, let's call it sword pool because we have, we're eventually going to have a bunch of different swords to be able to spawn. And for this, we're going to store sword stats. We're going to call the function. Now, it's going to come up with this warning because we don't actually use this in any other part of the code for now. All right, that's it at this point, just at this point in the code. We are just writing a skeleton, so I think I'm doing much more work now than I actually need to. So when we press enter, we're going to be able to spawn some items. So var and number, we're going to be able to spawn a certain uh, group of objects, I guess. I random range and let's say one, two, three. All right. So it'll spawn anything between one to three objects. And we're going to say if instance exists, we're going to check to see if there are already O items in the room. If there are, instance destroy O item so that it just deletes all versions, all existing items, or all existing instances of O item. And then we're going to say for var i equals zero. We're going to put a for loop in, obviously. i is less than number i plus plus okay i'm not going to explain this too much so just let me type this out and then i'll like i'll quickly go over it all right so basically hmm, i have an error here i wonder why oh i have a comma there not a semicolon. All right, so when we loop through a for loop, when we go through that, it will run this equal to however long it takes to get from i, which is zero, 
all the way up to number. So for this, if we get, say, one, it will run only one time. If we get to three, it will actually run zero, one, two, three, four times. Uh, the reason being because uh, computers start from zero. And hence uh, why we start here. I mean, if we were to write zero, one, then if we do it one time, if number comes up as one, it won't actually run this code because it's already reached the end of it. Just keep that in mind, but that's not the point of this. All right, I think that's done for now. Let's assign a sprite here and let's see if this code works. I, I mean, it should work. There's nothing that's telling me it shouldn't. Okay, good. <laughs> it's spawned in at least one item uh, and it's animated at the moment because we haven't done anything to actually prevent it from animating. There is one thing though, I did make a mistake here and that is because if we were to spawn multiple items, we wouldn't be able to tell if there's multiple of them because they're all spawning on top of each other. We actually need to do is we need to add in or you can minus I multiplied by I'm going to say 96 because I think that's how big the the objects are. I'm not sure. I suppose I'll find out. There you go. There you go. So they're animating, but they're spawning in place. All right. Well, that's it for now. Let's go into the next video. We'll actually start filling in the code for the uh, sword item, as well as the scripts that we have written out. So stick around for that. Uh, hopefully you guys have learned something. If you haven't, if this has gone a bit too fast, then just leave a comment in the comment section below. I really do appreciate the feedback because like I said, I'm trying out a new format and I'm a bit nervous to try it out. So please do give feedback where possible. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, then great, ask away. I'll be more than happy to help you with that. All right, that's it from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.